Hi, this is Victor Young of Admiral Investment. Last week, we have discussed the basic framework of fair value. An additional topic is the value versus growth debate. In this debate, investment style is divided into value investing and growth investing. Value investing buys stocks that trade cheaply to their asset value, and growth investing buys stocks that are expected to grow faster than their peers. This differentiation allows for easy classification, as a limited number of metrics can typically describe the fund's investment style. For example, a value fund will typically hold stocks that have low price-to-book ratios, whereas a growth fund will hold stocks with high earnings growth rates. This distinction, however, can also be very misleading. Warren Buffett has once said that value and growth are like conjointed chains connected at the hips. To take an extreme example, even if a company owns substantial net assets, its overall value can still be zero if investors believe that the company will go bankrupt in a year. In more realistic situations, a company typically trades at substantial discounts to its net asset value when the company is flawed. These flaws come from many different areas, and we typically group them into operational, investing, and financing issues. In future videos, we will go through Emerald's 10 question lists to help identify and analyze these flaws. The bottom line is that if an investor accumulates cheap stocks without understanding why they are cheap, these stocks may not perform for a long time. On the other hand, blindly chasing growth is also a dangerous proposition. Most trained analysts and even the investment public can typically identify good growth opportunities. For example, good GDP growth, favorable industry fundamentals, and reputable management teams. But since a large group of investors can see it, companies with great prospects usually trade at a substantial premium to their asset value. Good growth does not justify an infinite price. For example, if an investor believes that an investment worth $1 today will in a year yield a capital gains of 10 times, the maximum price that he should pay is only $10. If he pays $20, he would still have lost $10 on a great investment. Sadly, investors as a whole can and do overpay in similar fashions. This is why Warren Buffett said that value and growth are conjoined in the hips. Value makes sense only when the stock's asset base generates sufficient growth, and growth only makes sense if it is bought at an appropriate price. More concretely, good rates should trade at a premium to not so good rates. This is typically the case. The best rates consistently trade at a premium to NAV, and the small rates consistently trade at a discount. Analysts then need to quantify how much the premium is worth. This is where fair value comes in. As we discussed before, fair value adds management value to NAV. In model speak, this means that we quantify the additional or subpar growth created by management. For instance, a company that shows consistent growth may have a fair value that is 10% above NAV, and a weaker one may have a fair value that is 20% below NAV. Assuming both stocks have an NAV of $1 per share, the stronger stock will then have a fair value of $1.1, and the weaker stock 80 cents. Note that day to day, investors should trade with fair value in mind. A stock is cheaper if the current price is at a steeper discount to fair value. In the above example, if the stronger company trades at a dollar, it is trading at a 10% discount to fair value. If the weaker company trades at 90 cents, it is trading at a 12.5% premium to its fair value. In this case, the stronger company is a better opportunity because it trades as a discount to its fair value, even though on an NAV basis, it is more expensive than the weaker stock.
On the other hand, however, if the weaker stock trades down to 68 cents, then it will now be trading at a 15% discount to fair value. In this situation, the weaker stock will become the better buy because the stronger stock is at a 10% discount to fair value, while the weaker one is at 15%. This is why all investment has a price. Even a weak company can be valuable if priced appropriately. And this is the power of fire value.